Hello everyone and uh, welcome into Ron's uh, YouTube channel here. We cover drone related uh, uh, gear as well as other you know photography related gear and tech, uh, general tech. So, But today is going to be a, a drone video and specifically a Mavic 3 uh, video. And sorry, I haven't had a Mavic 3 video up in a little bit of a while. We kind of just got over the holidays and you know been doing you know holiday related stuff and ha haven't got out to... Um, you do a lot with the, the drone in the past week or so. But, uh, you know, the, the Mavic 3 videos will be, you know, coming, uh, you know, fast and furious again here over here. I hope. And you were waiting now. It's, a, it's already the beginning of the year here of two year 2022. And hopefully the DJI uh, firmware update that brings the rest of the features to the Mavic 3 will, you know, come sooner or later. They promised January. So let's hope it's sooner in January rather than later. But, uh, but you know, let's enjoy what we have right now so again we're talking about the the dji uh, mavic 3 today uh you know the latest drone from dji the um you know the successor to the uh the you know the much beloved uh, mavic 2 pro so um you know i've been doing a lot of video video centric testing on the drone so far but i thought well you know uh, a lot of people are using it for photos. I take I take more photos than your average drone user, and uh, so I just wanted to do a little video concerning the photo quality of this drone. So um, what I've done is I've you know made a slideshow of some photos I've taken uh, you know on a recent shoot, and these photos are completely on there. You know they're all JPEGs. They're all completely unedited, you know, I haven't touched them in any ways except to put them in the slide, uh, you know, the screen, screen, slideshow, screen show, and, you know, they put a little music in there, whatever, but otherwise they're unedited. But what I'm, what I want to, you know, what I want to show you in this video really is my settings that I use for photos on the Mavic 3. Uh, in my limited experience, these are the settings that I've found work the best for me so far. Now, I'm not saying these are the best settings for everybody or they work in every scenario but they kind of work in in the wheelhouse that i you know uh work in here they capture photos uh you know at the beach in the winter you know in kind of some low light conditions now so um yeah, I'm going to walk you through, you know, the 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 um, not only the menu that's on the uh, right hand side, you know, the three dots, and you go to the third menu over into camera. I'm going to walk you through my separate photos in there, and then we're going to go in the in the main uh, interface of flap. We're going to go to the bottom, and uh, you know where you can switch from all to a pro and we're going to walk through the settings in there what uh, seems to work the best for me like, again sorry uh if you know if i haven't made this clear i'm only going to discuss settings as a concern photographs today uh, i'll do another video setting one later but these i'm not recommending these settings for video maybe maybe some would work for video but this is all photo centric today so um yeah uh so i hope you enjoy this video i hope you take a lot of uh you know photos uh you know with your uh mavic 3 uh, and uh you know if, if you you know like or disagree with any of the settings that i've talked about here just put it down in the comments or oh, positive feedbacks or whatever constructive criticism is, is always uh welcome and you know uh maybe i'll read something hey you know what he's right i'm gonna you know he or she's right i'm gonna start doing it this way too so you know please so give me your feedback let me know what you think of, of the photo quality uh, uh, the Mavic 3 and then you know later on down the road I will you know shoot some rolls I will process them in uh, Lightroom and uh, maybe we'll even make a video about that and you know see what you can do when you take a photo from you know, just a, you know just a straight off the camera photo to you know uh, take it in a uh, photo editor and really you know doing some work on it to bring out the you know the little hidden gems that you don't always get otherwise so uh, okay so with no further ado you know what's what's roll this um you know uh, screen show here
uh, I'm doing a screen recording here, and I'm going to walk you through some of uh, you know, my camera setup here uh, for the DJI Mavic 3. And today we're only discussing photo settings. We're only said referring to things that are photo related here. So, okay, uh, we're going to start off by going to the, um, the three dots in the top right hand corner. So, we're going to tap those dots, and we're going to go right over to camera mode. And, uh, you know, the first thing up, again, we, we have it switched in, you know, uh, you have to switch into camera mode if you were in video mode, uh, you know, on, on the settings. It would show video settings here. Okay. So, you have three choices here uh, for format. I, I think it comes out of the box JPEG. And you at the beginning, you could choose JPEG plus RAW if you want RAW files. But now, with the latest firmware update, you can just select just RAW files. So, Okay. Let's go back to JPEG. If you're just the type of person who snaps photos and uh, just posts them right up to social media or, uh, you know, do whatever you do with your photos and you never edit them, you know, you just, you just take them, post them, keep the ones that are good, throw out the ones that are bad, and that's all you ever do, just shoot JPEG. Okay, now, if you're the type of person who uh, basically, uh, you know, uh, takes photos, uh, Edits them, takes them in the Lightroom, uh, Photoshop, uh, the Luminar products such as um, Luminar AI. Uh, you will want to shoot raw because there's more data and information there in the file. So there's more uh, there's more you know pixels and data to be pushed around by these editors. So so pick raw if that's the type of person you are. And if you're kind of in between doing a little bit of both, if you you know if you just take, take pictures and just straight up post them to social media sometimes, and then sometimes you. You know, you take them in the Lightroom and you really do some work on them, we'll take JPEG Plus for all then. So, uh, you know, the, those three choices are all personal uh, preference. I'm going to put mine on, on RAW for right now. Uh, here's a little uh, insider trick here, power user trick. When I want to take a JPEG, if I have it on set on RAW like this and I really want a JPEG just to post social media real fa fast, just do something like, you know, hit the zoom just like one time. You know, get it, like make it go 1.2, whatever. So whenever you zoom, you automatically go to JPEG anyways. That's a quick way to take, a, you know, just a, you know, a one JPEG if you want a quick upload of a file. But, okay, off, enough off of that. Okay, size, 4.3 or 16.9. They're the aspect ratios and... Uh, you know, uh, you know, sixteen point nine. You know, four point three is your standard view, and sixteen sixteen point nine is that widescreen look you just saw a change in the background there. Uh, now, four point with four point three, everybody says use four point three because you know it uses more of uh, the you know the uh, sensor, or whatever. You get uh, you know you get the full you know uh, cut f full frame of your sensor with the six. 16.9 is a crop or whatever, so you've kind of cropped it a little bit, don't get the full aspect. So here's, you know, power user tip again here. If you're trying to get the most data, uh, the most information uh, there is, shoot 4.3 because we have to go in and edit later on. There's just more, uh, there's more information in that file. But again, if you're just the type of person who's just posted to social media, you know, a lot, and you really don't, uh, you know, you don't really do anything else for your photos. You don't blow them up or, you know, anything like that. You, you want a nice widescreen look for your social media, for Facebook, uh, YouTube, uh, whatever. Do it at 16.9, but uh, I'm going to leave mine at 4.3. Now, anti-flicker, uh, that's... Um, you know, anti flicker is the hard thing to explain for outdoor. Like, it's more of, for me, it was a little more of an indoor thing or whatever here. So, just put on auto. I, I don't think it can it can hurt anything. Uh, I'm not going to go into big explanation anti anti flicker. Um, you know, it's based on like, uh, you know, kind of what TV show, whatever. So, I think it's, I think 60 megahertz, 60 hertz is the American. Like format for TV and 50 is a European, but uh, if you don't know what you're doing, just hit auto. I don't think it's a, a big deal. I mean, some someone's gonna really say, "Oh yes, it is," but uh, you know, whatever. Uh, I'm just keep mine on auto. And, and if I'm not if I'm not on auto, then I go 60 hertz or whatever. So, but I'm gonna go auto. Okay, histograms kind of neat. It it puts a little uh, the, the thing you see. I'll just put up that little uh, bar there. Sorry, I went off the thing. You can see the little histogram uh, i'm gonna call it scale they put on the left side of the screen there where basically uh it 
shows um, how your light is in the image. Like right now, what you see in there is like uh, this, this, the shadows are being kind of crunched or not crunched really. All, all the, you know, on the shadow side is high, but on the other side, we, you know, with the exposures and the highlights and everything, there's nothing there. That's because I'm shooting in kind of a semi dark room here. So, what you want to do, you want to have some of those things going up and down, kind of on the left and the right too. Uh, and, not, and not just me, like I have almost, you know, everything's on the, to the left and over. So uh, that's, that's not a good look at histogram. But, it, you, know, you know, if you don't understand what the histogram or, you know, you don't care about that, you could turn it off. It, it's something, it's an old school kind of photography thing. Um, you know, what, what I like to do is, you know, sometimes rather than put the, um, I, get, I guess we'll get that minute where they have the, um, you know, like the overexposure, over, well, right in blood, the overexposure warning where you see those kind of like uh, funny lines showing you the part of the image is overexposure. Like, if you don't want like to see those lines, just use the histogram instead, and you'll know if you're overexposed, if, if you, you know, the bars are too high on the right hand side of the screen, you'll know you're overexposed. So, if you don't like to see those crazy lines on the overexposure warning, just use the histogram instead. You can use both. Uh, sometimes I use both, sometimes I only use one, and sometimes I use none or whatever, but, um, you know, what's, uh, you know, what's just, I'm going to leave the histogram on, turn the overexposure warning off, but, you know, you can do it the other way around. Okay, grid lines. I have, uh, you know, they have the one here. I have the one they call tic-tac-toe box. Plus, I have the, that dot in the middle one, or you can go to the one with that the extra line. I forgot what you call those extra, like, uh, I don't know what that extra line's called, but, um, you know, this is all personal preference. You don't need any of them, really. Um, peaking level, um, uh, it has a little explanation when when enabled in manual focus the objects in focus will be outlined in red uh, the higher the peaking level the thicker uh, the outline so um, again if you're using manual focus uh, this will help you this is something they brought over from uh, uh, you know uh, high-end cameras were you know for the, you know, your manual focus and you could just see the lines around and know what object in the um, Frame is focus of any objects in the frame's focus. So um, if you don't do a lot of, if you don't do a lot of manual focus, if you don't do any any manual focus, doesn't really matter what you have on because you're not going to see it until you go into manual focus. So you can turn it off. You can leave it on normal. Again, if you don't use manual focus, it doesn't matter. If you do use manual focus, uh, it's your preference how much of those red lines you want to see. I'm going to leave it on normal. Um, you know, using normal is enough for me to make sure I got the object I want in focus. Uh, so, okay. White balance, uh, I have it on uh, manual, but you know, the auto works pretty darn well here. As you can see, the auto just corrected the, uh, the, uh, the light in here to some degree here. Um, but manual, you know, if, if you, if you're, you know, you've been a long time for toxic, you understand your Kelvin, uh, you know, numbers or whatever, uh, you could probably dial it a little bit more to you, like in the manual, like right now it took a lot of the, uh, kind of the, um, warm colors out because I'm in a room with the kind of lights that make it real warm. So if I go up here, higher, 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 I keep, I make it look like, you know, <laughs> some kind of bad old cheap camera from the old days because it's too warm. But, you know, use the outside. I like mine, like about, like 5,600, 5,800 is, is, you know, kind of a general thing for me, but, uh, you know, you just put an auto until you get used to it. Lots of times what you could do is you could keep it all if you don't like all of this, switch over manual and adjust it a little bit. Okay, and then your storage location, you know, I, I kind of always want my stuff going to the SD card. I just use the internals. I run over in case my memory card fills up. And then you can sync download files to photo album. So, um, you know, they'll go right to your uh, automatic to your phone album without you have to do it. So that's a personal choice. If you want all this extra files on your phone album, uh, fine. If you want to do it manually, you know, that's your preference there too. And the, um, sorry, and the cache here is how much, uh, how much, how much you want to cache, you know, the, um, you know, the, the video, uh, you know, on the, uh, on this device here. Um, and it all depends on how much memory you want to use. And what cache is, if you've like, you know, Say you you unconnect your drone, you turn your drone off. Uh, a certain amount of the uh, pictures the video took are cached, so you, you know it's right in there, so you don't have to uh, always have the drone on when you're moving files over. Um, so that, that's all personal preference whether you want that on and what you want to set it out. I have it on four. If you have don't have much memory in your phone, you better set it on two or, or not at all. So um, yeah, um, and I'm and I'm not going to have this all synced to my uh, photo album because. I don't, sometimes I don't want all those, uh, you know, on my phone. So, all right. So that's it for the part of the camera, you know, stuff in, in you know, the general, um, 
uh, I guess you'd call them general settings. Uh, but now I'm going to go to, um, you know, the, the controls down here uh, in the bottom uh, right-hand corner of the screen. We have it on auto now. It's showing storage, which is showing, I think, how much more pictures I can store on this uh, memory card at this point. And that I have the format set as RAW, which we just saw we did that. And then EV, which is... Um, you know, uh, your, your exposure value. I think that's what EV stands for. But that's, you know, exposure, you know, how much, how light or dark the frame is. So, uh, yeah, you could go ahead and shoot in, in auto. And um, if you're in good light, uh, most of the time, the picture's going to turn out really nice. But also, you can uh, hit the auto button and you go into your uh, manual settings here. And I don't know why I'm getting that flickering here or whatever. Maybe I should have, maybe I should have had that, that I did leave the, that anti-flicker on higher, but... Um, you know, I could probably fix this with uh, some of my settings here. So, hold on. Yeah, I don't know why we're having that flicker. I've never seen that nice. flicker before, but I, I, I'm sure it's just some kind of an oddity here. So, okay, here's what we go in here. Now we can tap these things individually. So we, we set it to RAW, but we could switch it back on the fly here to JPEG or whatever. But we're going to keep it on RAW. Um, we'll switch it to JPEG just, just for the heck of switching it. Uh, okay, now here's the next thing to the, um, I'm working from my left to my right here, is the shutter here. So, um, you know, I know on, on video we always talk about shutter, you know, uh, what do you call it, the, uh, motion blur, you want your shutter, you know, double your, uh, your frame rate and all that or whatever, but on, on photos it's a whole different ball game. Uh, you kind of want to go for the, um, the shutter speed is the sharpest. And you can, of course, you know, make things lighter by lowering it. The more you lower it, the more uh, kind of light, you know, you, you leave in. But I find in general outdoor photography and, and decent lighting, I found that the Mavic 3 pictures look pretty sharp at about 1 20th of, uh, you know, of a shutter speed there, you know. So, again, that's in, in, in very good light. If you're in low light, you may want to, uh, make, you know, go lower, like, 100th, 180th, whatever, and if you're in extremely bright sunlight, you may want to go up, you know, 160th, 200, 240, but in, in just general, generally good light, um, I, I'm, I'm leaving it 120 for now, so let's tap that and, uh, you know, get that. Sometimes I have trouble getting these things to go away here, so let's see. Yeah, and if you want to go back to all, you just hit auto, but I'm going to, I'm going to go back to, let me see it changes to 115th because I'm in indoors, but I'm going to put it on back on 120. So, okay, so let's, uh, now let's go to um, iOS, because I can't get rid of this other way, so I'm going to go to your my iOS here. Um, okay, now you can leave an auto here, and, uh, you know, um, that's fine in a lot of situations, but um, I like to keep it at, a, it's, it's, it's put up with 600, because I'm indoors and low light is bad, but generally, I like to keep it at 100, because uh, that creates the, the least amount of digital noise in your frame but um you know when you're indoors in a situation like this or maybe it's low light right before sunset you may have to go higher so 200 see if we got lighter we could launch a histogram up there too let me move the histogram right above so you can see real good so it's getting a little bit better you know 400 it, it you know the, the histogram is moving from left to right getting out of the shadows are 800 we're getting good 1600 yeah you know now we're decent and 3200 now we actually have some uh, on the uh, uh, lines on the right hand side, 64. Now we're doing real good or whatever. But but generally, you want to keep that at about 100. You know, again for general outdoor drone flying. You don't fly your drone much in the office here. But uh, I'm going to go back to auto just so it looks you know decent here. And uh, you know we're on the EV setting here. Now, uh, it did that because of the brightness of the room. So, you know, I kind of usually start standard EV. And, again, you want to move the EV to get that histogram right. So, indoors here, we're going to increase it. And you see the histogram starting to go over to the, you know, the highlights and the exposures there. So, we're moving up to, you know, stop 1.3, 1.7, you know. So, you just that, uh, you know, uh, exposure value depending on, you know, your lighting uh, situation. So, all right, we're going to leave it at... Uh, We'll just leave it at 1.3. That was decent. Okay, so now we got um, you know our uh, you know ISO working for us. Uh, we got a shutter. Now here's our aperture here. Now this camera does have an adjustable aperture, unlike the Air 2S and the Mavic 2. They do not have adjustable apertures, uh, but the Mavic 2 Pro had an adjustable aperture, and the Phantom 
the Phantom uh, Phantom 4 Pro had adjustable apertures. Okay, so it's set on 4.5, which is good because I found that you know between 4, 4.5, and 5.0 are the sharpest apertures. Uh, you get the sharpest photo at those apertures. Now, um, again, limited testing. I, I, I've had you know. Uh, you know, I don't know, a dozen flights, something like that with it, so, something along those lines, maybe more. So uh, that, that p opinion could change as we, you know, we get more uh, more of a varied, uh, uh, you know, flights at, at different locations to check things out. But, okay, now, uh, so that's all fine, well, and good, 4.5 for sharp aperture. What are you in a situation where you need more light? So you may have to go down to, um, you know, we'll say down to 2.8, um, where... Uh, you know, you don't get as sharp as an aperture, say, in your quarters, you know, may not look as sharp as they did at the 4.5 or 4.0. But at this point, you're kind of willing to sacrifice some of the sharpness in the quarters to get more light and more exposure uh, throughout the subject. So, um, you know, uh, just as a rule of thumb, I like to shoot those apertures for sharper sharpness on this drone, but uh, you know, there's occasions where you 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 would sacrifice that quarter sharpness for other things. And you know, other times, you know, if you're um, you know shooting some extreme landscape photo, you know, that's far away from you, you may want to go up to a, a you know a high. I mean, to cl close your aperture down to eight, you know an eight or nine or whatever. Say it's really extremely bright, and you just want to close that aperture down, and keep some of the sun out. You may want to go a little bit higher up there. I, I on the on the on these drones, I found that I don't really like to go anything above eight point zero because you get this, um, you know what what what's that term? Like you know, it your image starts to look kind of funny. Like um, it's a it's a scientific photography the word has for been updated. when the image Please starts to look kind of wonky. Um, you know, uh, defrag or something like that. I, I can't think of the term they used to say, but. Um, you know, where, where things don't just look right, like things are curving wrong and, and things just aren't lining up in, in the image. So um, you want to stay away from, uh, you know, in most cases you want to stay from the, from the you know, real closed down apertures. Okay, so uh, I think we covered everything here. We covered, uh, going back, working from left to right, you know, storage, um, you know, uh, uh, format, photo format, the white balance, uh, the aperture, the, the, you know, the best aperture settings, the best shutter speed settings. Again, these are all, I'm giving you the best settings for photos. Only This is only photo related. Uh, your best ISOs uh, for photos. And uh, again, the there is no best uh, uh, exposure value thing. That all depends on, you know, the situation. So, okay, that's about it for the... Um, you know my photo settings, and uh, I don't know if I'm going to put this before or after. I'm going to I'm going to show a little slideshow of some of the photos I've taken with the um, you know the Mavic Three, and these photos are all unedited JPEG photos. Uh, I haven't touched them anyway; they're straight off the camera. And uh, some of them some of them were taken with me adjusting settings. Some of them were taken on auto. Uh, you know, so uh, you know, and and these you know none of the photo. I'm not going <laughs> to. You know, have all the photos labeled what what they were taken. I just don't have the uh, you know the time for all these photos. But I, maybe I'll break break down another video like one particular photo and give you all the settings. But this is just trying to give you a general idea of how the photos uh, look coming uh, straight off the camera out of the Mavic Three and what steps you could do in settings to you know get those photos to um, you know to look a little better. And one one last thing I forgot to say. Okay, we were talking about manual focus before. So okay, on the on the right hand side, right by the you know the uh, the, the uh, cap you know the capture button, the record button, what do you want to call it? Is that AF? And that's your auto. It's auto. That means it's set on auto focus now. But if you tap it once, you'll go to manual focus, and you can see that the the red uh, the red overexposed uh, the red um, things to tell you when something's in focus has appeared in that box on my on the th cabinet over there on the printer around the door frame. So that shows you the red uh, lines as that's showing you what's the most in focus. Here's the door handles in focus here. So we'll switch back to auto here. Okay, so that wraps up this part of the video. Thanks for um, joining me in this segment. All right, well, that's it for the video today. Um, you know, if you liked anything you saw here today, please give the old thumbs up and uh, subscribe to the channel for you know more content like this. And you might want to ring that bell notification so you'll know when I put another video up. Uh, you know, you just keep an eye out if you 
just want to see Maverick 3 videos. When you see Maverick 3 vo uh, video come up, you know, just uh, watch it. Put in your watch later. If I'm doing, you know, on some drone doesn't interest you, then, you know, <laughs> you know that that's good, too. You know, just uh, keep moving there. So, um, anyways, we'll, we'll be back, uh, you know, soon with, uh, you know, more, con more, you know, drone content, Mavic 3 content. We're still doing videos on the Mavic, uh, the Mavic Mini 2, the Mavic uh, Air 2S. We're still doing videos on the Evo 2 Pro. So, so uh, we, you know, we are, that's the drones kind of we're covering mostly now. We have the all tele nanos, you know, just about to come out now. And uh, I haven't pre-ordered the nano yet. I kind of really want to see the other people's reviews and see if it's a, it's a, if it's a ca if it's a camera drone that I really think I can work in with the drones I have, whether it fits any niche that's not covered by what I already have at this, you know, time. And uh, you know, I want to see how good the actual camera quality is, whether it's good enough, or, you know, whether it's a big enough step over the mini 2 that make it worth it i mean if the camera quality is only slightly better than the mini 2 i don't know if it's worth changing out you know so you know, again we will watch all the reviews and we will see so okay folks we will definitely see you on the next one